the Knicks have acquired Carl Anthony Towns from the Minnesota Timberwolves for Big Julius Knicks. Randle, Dante DiVincenzo, and a first round pick via the Detroit Pistons. Sources tell me, me, <laughs> and John, uh, whatever his last name is. Um, yeah, this this is a new duo. Crazy. Um, so apparently this trade isn't complete yet like finalized so there's still a small chance that all of this can go haywire but assuming that this trade has gone through um there's definitely a lot of talking points and discussions regarding this trade some people have made the argument that this is actually a lose-lose trade and both teams did not benefit from this trade at all um and there's also been conversations about the CBA and why this is an example of why the CBA failed so I guess let's just start off with just initial reactions from everyone how did y'all feel about the trade? Who won? Who lost? Is this a needle mover? Um, and things of that nature. Well, I got hard, so it's definitely a needle mover. My Knicks are on top. Not worried about Boston. Um, I was. I, I think if I'm not mistaken, I had already picked them to come out the East this year. This solidified it for me. Um, the people that are saying lose, lose, guys, I know sometimes people just want to say stuff on the Internet. Uh, especially if you can't elaborate, which is something I'll talk about later on. Stop talking. Just close your mouth. Just be quiet. Uh, especially when the real winners are in the building. Uh, and that's my Knicks, man. Oh, I don't know about the Timberwolves. Anthony Edwards, please get out of there. Fast. The fast way. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, well, as a person who initially seen this trade and first thoughts was lose-lose, I've sat... I've thought about it. I've looked at everything, looked at both situations post-trade. I reneged those st those statements I made. It's a win-win, depending on one thing for the Knicks, though. Mitch Robinson has to stay healthy for it to be a win for the Knicks. If Mitch is constantly injured again, I do not trust the defense of Carl Anthony Towns being the rim protector, the five, for this basketball team, where they're going to be predicated on perimeter D, but in the East, there are a lot of players that's about to give you problems at that rim that you got to get through. Barn, they stay healthy as well. But that's where we start throwing a lot of ifs. But that's why I say with them, it, it's a win for now. I just got to see know, them stay healthy. For the I'm, Timberwolves, I'm though, um, go Wait, ahead. Let me, let me interject. You know why I don't like you? Because any other time you would talk mm -hmm. about Joel and B being injured, Giannis mm -hmm. being injured. This is one mm -hmm. of those times where mm -hmm. you should be like, oh, man. It really don't have to worry about stuff at the rim besides maybe the Celtics getting to the rim from the wing position because the other guys that they face are going to be totally out of the picture. I thought that's Again, what you were going to say. I ain't going to lie. Um, it, that's fine, which is why I said I view this as a win for those reasons. If they can stay healthy, if those guys also aren't healthy, we got a different situation. We got a different talking point. But I'm acknowledging that them dudes being healthy is dependent <laughs> on it not going right for them if they're not healthy. It's, again, it's a bunch of ifs, but that's the only asterisk with them. For the Timberwolves, like I was about to say, I view it as more of a W for the Timberwolves. I think they really they, they get a bigger one. Yeah, I think it's a bigger one for the Timberwolves than it is for them. I think the Timberwolves are trying to build a successful team against how everyone else is trying to build their teams, which is strictly stretch the floor out, space out the floor. They're building more of a we done with the 90s ass type of philosophy, which we're going to go with Rudy Gobert. I said this when they had him. They're going to have to choose between Cat and Gobert. They obviously chose Gobert. They're going to have Gobert for the defense, which we can all agree is Mickey or whatever it is. It's not like it's Luke Cornette or something. It's Rudy Gobert. Don't worry about it. Big Ed Biombo. He's That's the center they pick. Cool. Julius Fulius. I like Julius, man. I'm not a Julius hater. I don't think that Julius Randle is such a problem. He was a problem for the Knicks. I don't think he's such a problem for anybody else. I think it works for them. And then I think Ann will be him. And it'll, it'll work for them. And Dante DiVincenzo. Dante DiVincenzo being the role player that they got to make this deal get done because they weren't going to get a Randall off without giving up someone. The fact that he was able to get a first-round pick and Dante back, Dante helps them in a lot of ways. I, I like how they look more than the Knicks. This is certainly an interesting trade. Um, I was starting off with the Knicks. I actually think the loss of Dante DiVincenzo, not from a talent perspective, but is overrated just because I'll give Dante this. I'm confused on what he thinks is going to happen in Minnesota, but 
I've heard that he, it, a main reason why he was cool with it is because of minutes or anything like that. Maybe that's a rumor. Maybe I got censored. But at the end of the day, he wasn't going to, unless he was playing better than somebody a specific night. I assume those closing lineups he wasn't going to be involved with, unless I'm missing something. If you have um, OG, you have Hart, Brunson, Robinson, and at that point, you're probably looking for somebody with a bit more size, unless you really just want to run OG at the four, maybe, I guess. Then Dante squeezes in there. But, um, yeah, I, I don't have a concern. I don't have a concern about the Knicks losing Dante from for it being like a huge killer. And I think Carl Anthony Towns, whether you run him at the four, whether you run him at the five, I think he'll definitely be helpful towards a team that at times can struggle just simply like creating a bucket unless it's JB. Um, they definitely lost that one of their better playmakers though, and the Timberwolves gained that. However, I'm gonna be the casual of the pod. I saw a lemon on the ground. I'm keeping it simple, stupid. These niggas are trying to uh, uh, enhance playoff performance from a Western Conference Finals appearance, and they put Rudy Gobert and Julius Randle in the front court to dig together. Yeah, yeah, that, that's tough. Now I don't give a fuck who, what, when, or why you did it. That's very tough. Now Dante is going to be great for this team. <laughs> like on the flip side, I think, and that's why I said it's not Dante Divincenzo's overrated. Dante is going to be fantastic for this team. Uh, maybe in a perfect world, they get like McBride or something. I still think they need a point guard. Conley wasn't bad, but doggy getting old. But ah, ah. Well, no. For, I said that for, from from from, from the two for the two teams involved, this is what it is. Like this is the final trade. So there is no they get McBride or whatever the case may be. That this is it. Mm -hmm. They need yeah. a third team to take cash. The Knicks need to send out like eight million. Yeah, this is yeah. Either way, yeah, I know I know this pretty much locked in. But then when I'm looking at what Randall will provide for the Timberwolves, again, playmaking something they need. But then, and Damo, I don't like the stress the floor idea because again, maybe I'm just making too much lemonade here. You try to stress the floor, you trade away the best shooting center I've seen. That's to move. That's a decision. So I, I'm just at the end of the day. I think the Timberwolves, I'm not going to say they did anything lateral. They tried something new. Maybe they really, really, really believe in Nas Reed stepping up later down the line or in clutch moments to the point where they thought Carl Anthony Towns was expendable, so they got a playmaker and they got a guy that can uh, be 3 and D for you at the guard position. But it's it's definitely something that I honestly don't know what's going to happen to, but if I have to clip farm and say win, win, lose, lose, or anything like that, I think the Knicks will surprise a lot of people on how good the move will be. And I think the Timberwolves... It, it just comes down to are we getting Julius Fulius in the playoffs or are we getting Julius Randle in the playoffs? Not saying Julius Randle is over the top fantastic, but all trolls aside, I mean, at one point in time, you niggas tried to say he was better than Bosch, so. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's where that went. <laughs> uh, like, like I've been saying all offseason long, man, the West, there are two teams that have separated themselves, and my God, after this trade, those two teams have been more established than me. The yeah. Oklahoma City Thunder and the Dallas Mavericks are going to be the two teams at the top of the West. Everyone else is playing just to play. I'm going to be a, these are A playoff teams in the Western Conference. Um, and the Minnesota Timberwolves, I understand people wanted to, uh, but they had a great season last season. And they're still young. They can only go up from here. I'm sorry. That's not how NBA teams work all the time. And I think this is a move that at the very least, I don't think they got better at. Um, and in my opinion, they got worse. I'm. I'm. A, I'm a just. I'm not high on the yeah. Julius Randle, Rudy Gobert front court. I remember the conversations we were having about trading Carl Anthony Towns, and I was actually for trading Cat for a fucking point guard, not Julius Randle. Um. So definitely didn't expect that. And then there's rumors about Dante not liking his role in New York. So if that's the case, is he really gonna like his role in Minnesota, uh, which is also gonna be a reduced role off the bench? We'll see how that plays out. Um, they are banking a lot from an Anthony Edwards playmaking improvement this upcoming season that I don't think Anthony Edwards is ready for in year four, year five, maybe year seven, year eight. And But right now, they're asking a lot from him, and I don't think he's ready. Maybe these are the growing pains that he needs to go through to become that player down the line. But, uh, yeah, now this upcoming season is cooked for them. They're not They're not winning a championship angle. Right? How, many, how many cats are in the league? And not not a hundred percent like we're the, getting at the, to at the big man spot or in at general? the big at the big man spot and let me define what I mean by that 
four five, can stretch, really shoot it, can also defend in the post, uh, has the ability to pass the ball. How many cats are in the league? Cat, Bam, Wimby, AD, Joel. I mean, Jokic ain't cat, but he's way better. Than Porzingis. Cat. Porzingis. A worse version of him is probably Al Horford, and then like random rookie that I don't know ball about. I mean, Paolo. So I like nine. You said four or five. You think Paolo can play five for real? A small ball five. I mean, he played in the Olympics. That stretches. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so, and one. even and even on the Bam one for Sage, I I don't. This the only thing that Bam would be missing is the true the true range. Um, but so so it basically sound like superstar bigs, right? Mm. You said Wimby, you said Jokic, you said Embiid. These yeah. sound like superstars. There's some other guys there, but even the point of Bissell's Kristaps Porzingis, which four for Porzingis, but ultimately Porzingis, cool. Sabonis, I don't know if somebody said that. But yeah, I look. didn't. I didn't say Sabonis. Yeah. Stretching it all the way to the five. I mean, to the to to the three. I mean, you're not doing that. I mean, he he don't shoot like cat. Not doing that either, he, to be honest. he don't I mean, shoot like cat. He's not shooting like cat. If that's the, yeah. I mean, and not even. I, 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 like, nah, man, they don't shoot like he can cat. shoot a jumper. I mean, he's not. But yeah, I wouldn't leave Sabonis open. On them. I, I got you. Uh, I get it. You talking about the three? You talking about the three? It's fine. Yeah, I'm talking about y'all. Y'all leaving Sabonis open in the corner at the three. All right. At the three, yes, but in terms of like a jumper, like I'm, I know the nigga can shoot. Yeah, he can. Hit. Yeah, we're not saying he can't hit. And but no, no, if, if you're holding shooting against him, I'm not arguing. Like I said, yeah. cool. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm not. I'm not caping and, for a Sabonis one point one point one attempts. And the, and the reason why the reason why I asked that question is because I think at least for me, and this is my big thing, but you know, I'm I might be on some of those sides of basketball Twitter and these basketball conversations. What the Celtics just did is the way that a lot of people need to be looking at their team and trying to construct in that direction. Uh, maybe he's an era too soon, or what, but I think Carl Anthony Towns is like that type of guy. You can talk about his defense all you want. He played very well in the Denver series, in my opinion. Um, I've also known him to be able to play defense. This isn't him back when Jimmy Butler was on the team or whatever the case may be. I think... The collective that they have in New York can get a little bit more defensive juice out of him in a bunch of different regards. They have a bunch of versatility on that team now. Um, I loaded it up in 2K, of course. Those guys, they, they look good. They look good. Now, maybe depth from the four position, from the true four position, maybe the conversations. But, I mean, even Josh Hart held it down a little bit last year. I don't, I, I don't see this to be anything but a win for them and then... On the other side, it's 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 a it's a loss to me. Yeah, you could argue the Knicks got better defensively, which nobody's talking about. Um, because even if you think Cat is like to put a grade on it, what's the low ball for Carl Anthony Towns? Like a C. I mean, are we saying Julius Randle's the same level as Carl Cat defensively? I think he's that, better. But yeah, I think there's a bragging. lot of footage that says Cat's at least better if you don't think by a wide margin. So I think that they definitely got better defensively. They definitely needed the size. Um. Man, I'm imagining if this team had uh, Isaiah right now, I think I'd really be high on this trade because at that point you can solidify Cat playing the four for like a – I don't know if it's the first time, but you could like lock in Cat at the four. And at that point, yeah, that's a damn good team. Let me let me he go over played, to the Knicks. He just had two years with Rudy Gobert. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. He was yeah, a yeah, solidify I, I, four then. Yeah, 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 yeah. My bad. I'm tweaking. I'm now, tweaking. Let, me, let me just go over to the Knicks because I want to give them a round of applause, man. I want to – for the off season that they had, bro. Let me tell because this team is giving me when like everyone was sort of afraid of the Warriors talk about no one can beat them. And then the Rockets were just going all in. Fuck it. We gonna be the one to beat them. And they almost did. I think this Knicks team, with the way certain people are talking about the Celtics, is that for the Celtics. Man, fuck them. We are not about to be pussy. We have a championship window right now. We are getting Mikhail Bridges. We're re-signing OG. Uh, we're getting Jalen Brunson back. We're bringing in Carl Anthony Towns, like all of these different trades. So I got to give them a round of applause for that alone. Um, and I think that establishes the right mentality for this New York Knicks team this upcoming season, which is going to be a really big season for them. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns and now he fits. I honestly really like it as well. There's there's some questions defensively when you roll out lineups of like Mitchell Robinson, uh, Kat, and, and Jalen Brunson because Mitchell Robinson slow-footed big. 
Carl Anthony Towns can still get abused in certain scenarios. Jalen Brunson's a, a small point guard. Uh, however, what Carl Anthony Towns does bring them is a lot of line of versatility that they just didn't have. And I would say their biggest weakness going into the season, outside of, I would say, additional perimeter playmaking alongside JB, would be shooting from the shooting from the big man position. Because, like, like who, who would be their bigs this upcoming season? It would be, what, Mitchell Robinson, which we said he's going to be out uh, for a minute. He's going to be injured. Um, Precious, is Precious the truth still on this team, right? Yeah, Precious is still mm-hmm. on the truth. Yeah. yeah. And what, Jericho Sims? Yeah. yeah. And then you probably have to run, like, what, OG at the five at times, maybe to get some shooting on that five position. But mm-hmm. having Cat there definitely answers that problem. You can go really big, too. Run lineups of like what Jalen Brunson, Mikael, OG, Cat, and Mitchell Robinson. I saw the JB at four guys that are what like six, seven plus. Man, I a hey, that's that's a that's a squad right there, man. That's a squad, cute little squad, cute little squad. So, you know, shout out to the Knicks, calm little keep, squad. Can we keep? I, I want to continue to applause the Knicks because we we basically I feel like for the past three off four off seasons. We've been talking about how they've been able to turn the corner from one of the laughing stock franchises to what they are today. And every other mm-hmm. franchise who's not doing something similar, we've just been like, okay, Charlotte, you got a piece. Can you build on it? Atlanta, you got a piece. Can you build on it? Orlando has been doing some things that are like a lot of people have liked, but there's a bunch of teams out there that are that were like, all right, you 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 got a piece. Can you build on it? Or you you had a little bit of traction or motion. Can you build on it? The Knicks have just literally for the past like four or five years, people every offseason. Yeah, they are. It, it's night and day. If somebody, if somebody died, and I know this is gonna sound great. <laughs> Whoa. If somebody <laughs> died in like, I don't know, 16, 2016 or whatever, 2017, and then you died, and that y- y'all were both in heaven and they asked you about the New York Knicks, you would have to go up there and tell them. I gonna lie, they're one of the best five teams in the league. They would be like, "Yo, get the fuck out of here!" Th- did they let Charles Oakley back in? <laughs> That's exactly what they would say to you. I, I, especially Wait, being a, a fan of a team, yeah. <laughs> especially being a fan of a team that that's you know, it's Atlanta. I'm I'm just I'm taking it back. I'm just like, wow, this can be done. Type shit. No, um, evolution on top of that. So yeah. as a Laker fan, my God, right? Holy shit. It's not like they're doing it the Knicks way or because they're the Knicks. Jesus Christ. Um, furthermore, furthermore, I mean, I, I'm not necessarily um, calling them like the Warriors either. But for the love of God, I don't think Vsauce was. But yeah, I definitely I thought I thought this of the Knicks prior to this move that they were all in. And I have respect for that. I think a lot of teams in the 2020s are going to have to do that to get a championship, especially if you guys are going to label this the parody era. People are going to have to go all in on these championships year by year. Um, And then I'm just thinking about this team and like, I don't mean to double down because it's going to come down as hate or whatever, but I'm really just thinking about it more. And yeah, the potential lineups that the Knicks have to run now, again, if it, I would have liked to keep Dante if possible, of course, but I'm just thinking, if I'm like getting shorter so Dante DiVincenzo can play, and Dante's a fantastic player, in my opinion. But yeah, I just I just think that they've raised their ceiling even higher. And I think that'll go a long way for this team come postseason. Um, especially and this not gonna be the case because we know how all these East teams get down. But especially if everyone's healthy, I think there's a better impact on the floor in closing moments of the game to just a hey, gang look. Dante's cool. Just run hard at the two, OG at the three, and just just bring out a big that can stretch the fucking floor and whatever whatever power forward is getting boards tonight. And maybe if we want to go smaller, then I right, bet or just or just run um um Brunson, Josh, Cal, OG, Cat. I think like they have a ton of. I think they actually have more versatility than having essentially. Four two-way wings, two really good point guards, and then a big man. I think they have more, much more versatility now. Deuce gonna surprise y'all too. I'm Miles just gonna, yeah, that's what I'm talking about when I said two point guards. I, I gonna, fuck with. I'm gonna surprise you. I'm gonna just be honest. Uh, it's just not moving me because I'm not a cat guy. I've never been a cat guy. Was out on cat a long time ago. I understand and get what everyone is saying, and I get the hype, and I understand the dynamic that he brings to the Knicks which is why I can view it as a win, taking a step back from being a hater. 
I can get the addition by the subtract and also the addition by subtraction of a Julius Randle. I do see. I don't know. I just I don't have a great reason to be super optimistic outside of a lot of Anthony Edwards praise and a lot of hope for Anthony Edwards. This is a lot of things about this Timberwolves team that will make me want to hate on it. I just don't want to hate on it. I don't know why. I can't explain yeah, it. I'm about to it's say, a lot of reasons of why people. it makes sense for me to hate on this team. But be, I guess because of how much I like Ant, I refuse to hate on it. I just got to see it play out. Because I do see a world where them going anti, essentially anti-establishment with the team building. I know B. So said he's out on the Timberwolves because of, if you're going to move off of Cat, at least get a point guard. Maybe Rob Dillingham's that point guard for them. Again, yeah. another guy yeah. where it's like, oh, I man. called him Bo Highland, but <laughs> do, it makes sense for me to hate. I just don't want to hate. I don't get I, it. I, I don't know I why. It makes sense for me to hate. I just don't want to hate. I hate to be this guy, bro. I hate to be this guy, bro, but like, I think uh, y'all are skipping over. I think their answer at playmaking is literally like low-key Julius Randle. I think they're literally just going for, hey, bro, we ain't got no fantastic <laughs> playmakers over here. We're just going to have like Julius and <laughs> Conley and Ant, and that's what terrifies me. Well, well hold on so, now, Sage. I saw something yeah. today that said it terrifies. Me. They asked, they asked <laughs> Ant what was the biggest thing that he learned from the Olympics. He said, uh, I learned from Steph Curry about playing off the ball. So, hold on. Stay with me. People this whole summer have wanted Ant to zig. Yo, become a better playmaker. Become a better guy on the ball. He decided to zag and get better off ball. So, they bring in Julius Randle. So, y'all are talking about playmaking hierarchy. One Mike Conley, two Ant, three Julius. No. It's one Mike Conley, two Julius, three Rob three. Dillingham, oh. <laughs> four Ant. Kyle yeah. Anderson. No, he's not on the team. And that's what I'm saying. They're like, cooking a well, mini now. Hold on. And, and that's a, I just don't like that. And again, ain't no person live going to make me sit here and pretend like for all the playoff droppage, dropper, whatever shit y'all give Cat, dog, you trying to advance further than the Western Conference Finals and you traded for Julius Randle. There's just nothing. No, there's no evidence that that's a good move, man. man you, believe you, you, in you the know how this man, like all this hate, yeah, is crazy. Hold, hold like, on, you hold believe on. in it. It, it uh, works. No, 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 it no, no, works no, no, in a crazy way. Because you said you're not a cat guy, so I'm about to pull up right now. Cat stats. Quick little basketball reference. Oh, this man. is literally. Let's see what happens. Yeah, what happens? These goes guys shoots, with these statistics. Shoots four. Oh. Shoots forty six from the field last season. Thirty six from three. Now, what is the last thing I seen Julius Randle do in these goddamn playoffs, bro? Pull it uh, up. Do the knowledge. Let me, yeah, let's I'm about, see, to, let's about see. to do it right what do now. Do? It was forty six. Thirty six. Right. Yeah, 46, 36. We're, we're going with um 16 points for Randall on 37 25. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. And how many games? Um I'll let pull this back too, up. Luke. Uh oh my bad. It was it was yeah, 36 25 on uh, 10 games. I think I think oh, Julius is I think Julius is better than his playoff numbers, but I do still think that this they didn't win this. Like I think this is a bad trade. Yeah, I think he's definitely better than thirty six twenty five. I'd yeah, hope yeah, so, yeah. but pff, it scares me. I'm 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 gonna say something about Ant that y'all don't want to hear, man. I ain't gonna lie, man. It's not him. It's not him. Listen, Ant listen, Ant listen, listen, y'all, listen. Y'all listen. hate on Ant. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just saying this this I might summer. I want to hear it. This summer we we were talking about you know stars that like took a left right you know what I'm saying some people turn cold hey, the brother, other turn Taco, speak up. you know Vince <laughs> Carter and I understand it's not even like a him thing it's a team thing for real for real man but boy if he stays on the Timberwolves Anthony Edwards or Donovan Mitchell gang like ooh. Yeah, I'm not entertaining this conversation. Y'all can have your fun here. I think one Anthony Edwards, if anything, has clearer, higher like potential. Um, but then two, I'm just look, I'm just looking at these things and I'm asking myself, yo, if this nigga just had a good offense and then you trade away the second best offensive player from a chemistry perspective, what seemed to be his like brother damn near for Julius Randle and Dante DiVincenzo, maybe Dante off the bench or Dante even potentially starting. Or maybe just the fact that Nikhil Alexander Walker can play at different spots in the game now. Maybe there's a domino effect that I'm missing here. But yeah, the Timberwolves offense already being dangerously sus, then trading Carl Anthony Towns after a Western Conference Finals appearance just does not 
conceptually make a lot of sense to me. And that doesn't necessarily mean, hey, well, you got to keep the keep team the same. You made the conference finals. Hell no. I'm I'm for trading cat if you got an upgrade. I just don't view this as an upgrade. Listen, listen, listen. Y'all are y'all are overthinking it. And that's what I've just come to realize when it comes to this Timberwolves thing. Y'all are overthinking it. So at a, eventually when so many negative things collide, a positive has to happen. In my Anthony mind, Edwards, sit with basketball. me, sit with me now, sit with me now. Anthony Edwards admitted he sucks at throwing lobs. Therefore, you get a player who could go in, go in and get dump off passes and lobs to your center who only can catch lobs. If Rudy's going to be effective, it is only catching lobs. Y'all are thinking too inside of the box. Sometimes the unconventional approach is the approach. These guys still have a lot of these key pieces that got them to the playoffs. And then we're not we're not considering the guys that are going to have to do a little bit more. Nas Reed, we've been asking Nas to have a bigger role. A guy like Jalen McDaniels or Jaden McDaniels. I forget which McDaniels. I always forget which one. Jaden. But Jackson. <laughs> Julian. Um, but J Mac, listen, I, I I get it. He wants a bigger role. Maybe giving him the keys a little bit to do his thing will help. A lot of guys will give give a lot more than they had before. We're talking about a reduced role for Dante DiVincenzo. Maybe this is the role he's looking for if you go into the Timberwolves and then he offense and he believes he can give that offense. I get it. It's Cat. Y'all love Cat. I get it. I've always said Cat ain't no dog. And Julius Randle, if there's not one thing that he is, I've, I've seen it since he was a rookie. He got that dog in him. Julius is a dog, man. She and a big dog. Anthony Edwards is a dog. We are about to see the most unconventional duo we've ever seen before. That's why I believe duo. in it. I've been sitting there thinking, Win yes, 48 duo. games. The Ant Edwards, Julius Randle duo is going to go crazy. Ain't Top no five duo. duo in the league next year. You can't name me two and, better, honestly. And yeah, let yeah. me and All let right. me say this. If if it ain't snowing, Julius ain't going. Um, <laughs> I know I know we got to. I forgot about that picture but, but, with the Knicks. <laughs> yeah, snowman. 